Hi, Professor Argwells. Uh, first off, thanks so much for the the great job you did on explaining uh, how to build vocabulary through extensive reading. I found the I found the method of dividing vocabulary into levels based on on a thousand word rank at a time uh, to be very useful a uh, conceptual tool for figuring out what level you're at. However, I, I do think that it's also important what vocabulary you know and not just how much vocabulary you know, um, what subject areas you know, whether, whether you know more literary vocabulary or more um, kind of current uh, common spoken language. Um, and all that should really be taken into account during testing. Uh, as you pointed out, the, the vocabulary test uh, website, which I, which I tried, is, is really um, has a bunch of British words in there, and that throws the test off. Anyhow, uh, great ideas, but I think there definitely needs to be some more research into how to test the this vocabulary rank and then what exactly we mean by it. Maybe there needs to be a little more subtlety in there other than just uh, a, a, a 14,000 word family level. Maybe there, there's a little more complexity there that, that we could that we could um, add. Anyhow, um, I've, I've been recently doing some extensive reading in French and I found that the, the book I'm currently reading, uh, Jules Verne's uh, uh, Voyage au Centre de la Terre, is, I'm at the level where I, I counted on a, a couple pages, and, and I've got about 98% uh, lexical coverage. The words, 98% of the words I know or can figure out from context uh, easily. And I am finding that I'm, that I'm learning, but... but just by kind of reading and, and passing over the words I don't know and allowing them to, to to kind of flow past me in hopes that I will lock on to these words as I as I continue. But I do find that the occasionally looking up words in a, in a dictionary can be useful. And what I've been doing is instead of looking up words in a, in a French to English dictionary, I've been going straight to a, a French French dictionary, particularly uh, uh, the litre which is a, a public domain uh, French French dictionary from like the, uh, the 19th century. Anyhow, I, I go to the French French entry and I, I take a quick look at the at the first sense, the oldest or the most common or the most literal sense of the word to get an idea of what what the word means. But then I jump right down to the etymology and I look to see if, I, I can recognize the word from its Latin origin or from perhaps its German origin or wherever the word came from. And I've, I've had great success with this method. Uh, I find that getting a link from the French back into the Latin allows me to sometimes connect forward into the English and I have a, an idea of, of what's going on. So like, for, for example, I run into the French word uh, étincelle. And which means spark in English, right? So if I just look up the definition of étincelle, I get some explanation of what uh, a spark is in, in French. But if I go down to the to the etymology, I see that étincelle is is a kind of Frenchization of of the of the of the Latin scintilla. And scintilla, I say, well, it's not the most common English word, but we definitely use scintilla when we say there, there wasn't a scintilla of evidence. There wasn't a, the slightest bit. There wasn't a spark. Or we say to scintillate, uh, sparking. And that just, that etymological connection makes the word just stick. I don't forget it, and, and I immediately that word enters into my, my long-term vocabulary. It's like just stuck onto an existing structure of English knowledge uh, or knowledge of some other language. Anyhow, so this method that I've been using, going to the etymological dictionary 
uh, when I don't know a word has really been helpful and I'm and I wonder what role that could play in uh, in learning in learning language maybe it's not appropriate for extensive it, the kind of extensive reading you're talking about but uh, I wonder how we can use etymology to to help uh, increase our, our vocabulary and our understanding of, of a foreign language uh, lastly I'm working on this idea for a what I call a an etymological meta dictionary the idea is to take a, a bunch of, of dictionaries which are which contain etymological information and and search through these dictionaries so we have like a French dictionary with etymological information an English dictionary maybe maybe like Oxford or Merriam-Webster that has an etymological blurb at the bottom scan scan through all these these dictionaries take that etymological data and create links create a big network of, of words in various languages and how they're connected through through genetic relationships not necessarily direct meaning relationships and and this could allow you to look up a word while I'm reading in say French and I read I read étoncelle I look up étoncelle that I don't know in French and immediately I get connections to the other other languages which have used the same root which have have a genetic connection to étoncelle or scintilla or scintillating or or whatever I mean maybe this word is used in in German and I just don't I just don't know it I hasn't haven't come across it I think that such a meta etymology would be a real boon to to polyglots and, and aspiring polyglots um, anyway that's I just like to know what you think take care